So greetings, everyone. It's Wednesday, January 19th. This is our weekly Familiar Twitter Spaces event. Uh, uh, it's myself, Jack. Uh, we have Mantis and uh, some other folks we, we might bring in. And, and of course, the core about it is we want to update the, the faithful community of sommeliers about the status of uh, the sommelier network as we continue uh, week to week to drive progress on um, the amazing offering for the co-processor of Ethereum, uh, Ethereum co-processor for the network. So, so Jack, um, I thought it'd be nice to kick off and talk about what happened last week, um, sort of a quick top level post-mortem on our upgrade for the sommelier chain. Um, do you feel comfortable covering some of the high points? Yeah, for sure. So uh, last week we had a flurry of governance activity. We had a uh, community spend proposal to stage the funds for the airdrop. Uh, we had a parameter change proposal to increase the quorum for governance proposals, right. uh, which is also passed. And then finally, we had an upgrade proposal. So, uh, you know, right now the sommelier chain is uh, pretty sleepy. Um, so we allowed the chain to be offline for a bit uh, while we were uh, organizing everyone for the upgrade. Yep. Uh, we tried to do the upgrade on Monday, but uh, the upgrade handler we wrote didn't properly set uh, set the last store index. And, you know, that doesn't mean a whole lot to a whole lot of people. And, and honestly, it didn't mean anything to me until uh, earlier this week. Um but uh, the upshot of that is we were unable to bring the network back online. Um, we're, we've exported the state and we're going to be bringing the network back online. Uh, I think Friday is the current, uh, the current schedule. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of the issue that we ran into. Um, misprogrammed upgrade handler. Uh, so yeah, uh, does that cover it, Trey? Yeah, I, I want to think, uh, and yeah, that's great. One of the curious things I want to think about is what did we learn from this? I noticed that, um, you know, the, the, the main that has been running for a, a little while and, um, you know, this upgrade um, sort of brought things to the surface that I'm not sure other Cosmos chains might experience. Is it your view that, you know, what we experienced was something unique and interesting and maybe something we want to share with folks who are in Cosmos ecosystems and thinking about chain upgrades. I don't know if that's, that's your thought in terms of how this, yeah. this experience happened. Yeah. You know, the, um, this is sort of a new Zucky and I, when we first started doing Cosmos stuff, um, all of the upgrades were this kind of like dump state, restart the chain with a new history. And uh, since Stargate, we got a bunch of new tools to make upgrades easier uh, but the upshot of that is this is kind of the first one of the new format uh, Zucky and I have, have done together. And, uh, you know, there's some tricks to writing these upgrade handlers. And there's not uh, the documentation on those is uh, hidden in a bunch of places. And there's some gotchas, one of which we kind of ran into. So, uh, yeah, you yeah. Know, I think that writing up a little bit of uh, detail on sort of what were the upgrade handler issues we ran into would be yeah. a good way yeah. to sort of share, share some learnings with the Cosmos community as a whole. I, I think that is awesome because, I, you know, especially for chains that, you know, as, as Cosmos chains begin to increase in the volume of TVL they're handling, um, hundreds of millions now into the billions, uh, making sure that, you know, everybody oh, in the Cosmos ecosystem... Sorry. Yep. Billions. We're already in the billions. Thank you. As we head to the trillions. <laughs> um, I, I, you would agree then that I think everybody in the Cosmos ecosystem should know about this and know how to do great upgrades um, as they become more automated uh, yeah. and, and, and more complex. Yeah, you know, it's that's that's very true. You know, it was, it was cool to see. I, I took part in the Kava upgrade this morning. They, they upgraded to IBC and they did one of these dump state restart upgrades. And, um, you know, there was a number of issues with that, which is why we kind of built this new system. And, you know, Osmosis has been using that fairly extensively. The last Cosmos Hub upgrade, actually two of them took place that way. Um, and, you know, Akash has an upgrade coming up that's going to be one of these upgrade handler upgrades. And, you know, as as these chains get more and more experience with that, this is going to be, by, this, is, this is already kind of the only way people do upgrades now. And it's, uh, you know, it, it's much nicer than the old method. 
Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, uh, I, I'm super excited for us to reconnect with validators um, as we have the the new state coming online uh, and the new chain ID. We will see this upgrade. So if, if you're listening, look out. We have announcements coming. And and for validators who are on the the uh, the, the Twitter spaces or reading this in transcripts, uh, you should be noted. Um, we will be reaching out to you directly uh, via the Simili protocol team to you know inform you and, and bring you into when the next upgrade uh, activity we can connect to to coordinate and make sure that uh, you're aware of what's happening. So so great there and thank you, thank you, Jack. Um, now, I think we wanted to also switch to more good news. Uh, we had today our first posting of uh, a proposal seller for Uniswap V3. And um, Jack, I, I, think, I think Mantis is here. I might invite Mantis to speak. But um, Jack, oh, we're super excited. Mantis, come on and jump up. But, uh, I know. <laughs> he, 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 he looks a little shy down there. <laughs> anyway, anyway Tariq, sorry, what were you saying? So we're sharing that we posted on the Sommelier blog in the community forum, uh, the first Sommelier seller proposal. Um, this is a first for Sommelier. Uh, the first ever seller proposal um, was put up today uh, in anticipation of the upcoming uh, Sommelier chain upgrade at Cabernet Franc. And I thought it would be nice to walk folks through what, how they could think about building a Sommelier seller, really so that the community can learn how, to, you know, how they can get involved and say, hey, I want to build a sommelier seller. So I thought maybe Jack would be nice to talk about the various components. And, I, and we broke them up um, into the, the, the sort of like five pieces. And I'm going through each piece and ask for your help to talk about how it works in the protocol. And I think uh, Mantis is here as a speaker. So um, Mantis, are you here with us? Good Hi. morning. I can't tell if you can hear me. All right. <laughs> we can hear you. Uh, and Mantis, what's the weather like where you're coming in from? Uh, it's a touch above freezing. <laughs> just, just a touch. <laughs> okay, so Mantis, we're we're going to talk about the first seller proposal that's up. It's meant to be informative. Let the community know how it works, and I think we're going to just talk about the pieces of it um, and how this all comes together in the Sommelier protocol. And I might I'm going to ask you and Jack to talk about how these pieces work. So. First piece, um, and I'm going to start from the top to the bottom. So there, there we put up five pieces. Um, one is you should think of the sommelier seller as this, you know, essentially a TVL of money. Um, so a, a, a vault of money where transactions are managed by the sommelier validator set. The validators themselves are essentially controlling and voting on the messages that move funds for users on Ethereum, currently via the Gravity Bridge. So I'm gonna start where, with how does this all work in like five big areas. The first big area is the, the this is gonna be a seller for Uniswap. If you go to sommelier.finance and slash blog, you will see this first set, so seven, talks about a Uniswap V3 seller. So this will be running on Uniswap V3, and it will be automatically rebalancing and moving range orders for liquidity providers on Uniswap v3. So there are five pieces. I'm going to first talk about the, the range order. So um, what this means is that when prices move on Uniswap v3, they will change. And so the seller is going to get information from our data providers. Now, Jack, I'm going to ping you. When we think of data providers or strategy providers on Sommelier um, in the architecture, how would you describe it, that they're sending these you know, information on how to rebalance or move transactions around on Uniswap v3. How would you say that looks like when, you know, we think of the architecture? Yeah, so that's, you know, e each of these validators on the sommelier chain has their own connection to one of these data providers. And that uh, connection to the data providers, they, you know, those data providers will need to provide them with information to help intelligently manage each of these different sellers that the sommelier chain manages. And, you know, right now we're talking about Uniswap v3, so we've been working quite a bit on uh, an open source architecture for validators to be able to run their own data providers. Um, and you can think of each of the validators as sort of running uh, an independent store of data uh, where they're pulling the uh, sort of how the liquidity should be distributed within these Uniswap v3 pools that we're managing. 
Awesome. Awesome. And so I think um, the next step after that is we have a piece of software called Steward that, um, you know, we are also important to this. Um, would you say that Steward is a piece of software that sort of manages the receiving of the information from the data providers and then bringing it to the validator set? Yeah, you know, there needs to be there between essentially like a, a database that has like it's a sort of traditional database that has um, all of this price data in it that helps make the uh, decisions on when to rebalance this liquidity um, and Cosmo transactions, basically. The way that the validators need to submit this information to the chain is via a transaction. And Steward is right. that sort of piece that sort of sits in the middle there. That's awesome. And, and congratulations to team member Colin Britton for uh, getting test integrations, integration test passing. So Stuart is, is ready for release. Okay, so going past, those are the first two. I'm now going on to the third group, which is now the Sommelier blockchain and the Sommelier gravity bridge. Um, so that's pretty straightforward, but, but um, uh, Jack, I'm going to say uh, Sommelier blockchain, Cosmos SDK, Tenement, we know that but also it has IBC capabilities already built in and active. So you'd say Sommelier is both an IBC active ready chain as well as an Ethereum bridge chain, yeah? Anything else? Yeah, you know, I mean, Tarek, you know this just as well as anyone else, uh, but this is this team, me and Zucky and Mantis and all of the folks here, we've been building in this cross-chain ecosystem for the last couple of years and right. IBC is definitely the most advanced cross-chain protocol that only relies on the, the sort of trust assumptions of the the blockchains that, that we run it against. And there's Gravity Bridge, which is sort of an extension of that work. Um, Sommelier is designed and, you know, the, the engineering team and expertise that we have here is all about interoperability and it's all about this ability to uh, you know manage things on a number of different chains so obviously ethereum and, and we've got a huge focus here on ethereum smart contracts and the ability to manage those via the som chain and we've got a lot of exciting other sellers that are coming after this uniswap one and maybe mantis can take a minute to talk about how we're generalizing this work we've done for uh, Uniswap into the ability for the SOM chain to manage kind of arbitrary smart contracts over on Ethereum, which is the next big release that we're working on. Um, and that's going to rely heavily on this uh, data provider architecture that we have as well, which is really cool. Um, so pretty excited about that. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I get you. And that's awesome. And, I, and, and leading into your question for Mantis, Mantis, are you okay to give us your broad view, again, very high level of how, you know, taking from Jack, the Gravity Bridge sends messages, these, these Uniswap messages to essentially the Uniswap Ethereum contracts? Sure. Well, the, the Gravity Bridge has never really known what, it was, what was being used to send across it. You write a custom module that takes advantage of the Gravity Bridge and it does some enforcement there to make sure that you are doing what you intend to do. Um, I'm trying to write a module that's a bit more open-ended so that you can take advantage of the Gravity Bridge just to send messages directly instead of only uh, transferring tokens and sending specific ABI encoded messages. So if you can do that, then you get to avoid a few of the unpleasant quirks of Gravity Bridge and Cosmos, which is the fairly slow iteration time of native modules. that They require a chain stop to upgrade. Oh, well, we know uh, what that feels like. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're essentially moving the, uh, the responsibility of enforcement of the message schema, essentially, out of the validators and to an external binary, um, there's, the validators are still going to need to verify the, that the body of the messages has popular approval, but they won't necessarily need to know what it is or what it's trying to do, just that it is the popular choice to be sent to Ethereum. That's awesome. And the, the upshot of that is basically that, you know, right now we have this very specific application that we've built and we spent a long time on, 
um, that only does this very specific thing around Uniswap V3 liquidity. And if you've been in any of these Twitter spaces, you've heard us talk about this fairly extensively. Um, and this improvement that Vantis is working on will enable us to have sort of arbitrary management of smart contracts on Ethereum-based chains. Uh, and to do that in a much more extensible way that allows us to add these things much more quickly uh, than previous previous architectures. That that is exciting. So so Sommelier is going head first and fully embracing the multi-chain world uh, in an aggressive way with these new improvements coming on the gravity bridge. Uh, this is this is just awesome news. And and again, you heard it here, folks. So 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 the secret alpha coming from Sommelier is. Uh, 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 gravity bridge being extensible for arbitrary messages across any any EVM protocol. Um, you know, now that we're okay, so moving and progressing through, I'll, I'll say the next step in our in our architecture is the, the smart contracts. And you know, so anybody um, permissionlessly can write a smart contract uh, that they would like to have run on Sommelier. It's you know, write it in Solidity. And so there is a Solidity smart contract that will be for the web USB 5.0. 5% pool. Um, Mantis, could you talk a little bit about how, or Jack or Mantis, either of which, how somebody submits, you know, um, or how does a, a, the seller contract get voted on to then be sort of permitted to be managed by the Sommelier validator set? Uh, I think Jack can probably speak to this a bit more quickly than I could. Uh, yeah, I'm, Jack? I'm happy to. So, uh, Right now, there's a governance proposal um, where once the seller contract is deployed and the ownership has been transferred over to the gravity contract on Ethereum, we need to submit a governance proposal, proposal to the sommelier chain to sort of like say, hey, this is something that we're going to track. And then the validators begin voting on the weights there. Um, so I just glossed over a fairly complex multi-stage process, uh, which right now, you know, somebody needs to deploy. They need to transfer to the, the gravity contract. And then once that happens, there's this governance process. Now, you know, that is, that is how it works right now with the Uniswap one. Um, I, I think there's a number of potential different architectures that we could have here. Um, one would be just a single governance proposal on the sommelier chain that uh, will deploy the new contract as owned by the gravity contract to start, as well as register this new contract as something that needs to be managed um, by the validator set. Um, that would be a smoother flow and would enable uh, sort of a less clunky deployment. Um, so anyway, yeah, right now it, it is a, a fairly complex multi-stage process. Right. And right. as right. we sort of iterate on future versions of the module, um, that will be smoothed out. And it will yeah. Make yeah. automated deployment of these things much easier. Right. And I, and I think to your point, Jack, it's only clunky because this is the first uh, Uniswap seller proposal ever on, on Sommelier. Uh, we encourage the community as the community thinks about new seller ideas. Um, you know, I think you're saying what's going to happen is this is this process is going to get even faster, even smoother, even more efficient because the permissionlessness of submitting the, the these proposals will allow a feedback mechanism to occur in Sommelia that that will allow us to reach some of these goals you're talking about, making it less clunky and 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 maybe less inefficient. So I'm really excited. Um, to say that, hey, this is the first seller. And I'm also excited to, that we can share this with the community and say, please, if you have a seller idea um, uh, for managing you know, liquidity on Ethereum, um, and right now we've already started with Uniswap you know, V3 to manage this point, we're expanding, come on board, come into our Discord. Tariq, sure. Yeah. Tarek, do you want to talk about the Ave seller a little bit? Because that, that's. Oh, uh, you. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness, dude! I gotta hide something. Now you're gonna make me talk about the Ave seller. Oh, all right. Uh, well, well, let's just say let's tease it out and say, um, you know, although we started with Uniswap v3, to your point, Jack, um, we are not a Uniswap v3 protocol. We are a protocol to manage liquidity wherever it may exist in the Ethereum ecosystem. And super excited to share that yes, um, 
looking at sellers that uh, go well beyond Uniswap V3, for example, Aave was the first seller that um, we at Volume essentially started working on outside the Uniswap V3, looks very attractive as a way to incentivize folks who are currently Aave lenders to take advantage of the SOM network for managing movement of their liquidity in the Aave ecosystem. Um, I you know, want to say is that, uh, again, that seller proposal is, uh, is currently in production and super excited about the work that both Jack and Mantis are doing to allow that seller now to be permitted. And, and there's, there, there's more. We have you know, lots more sellers coming well beyond Aave um, that are super exciting. I just want to give a shout out to the volume team of Brian and Kieran Hughes, um, who have come up with some great ideas. Jack, you, you know some of the things they're talking about. Um, I think this, this we're gonna this is seller season, um, and we're super excited to see some of these new seller ideas that do not depend on Uniswap comes come to light and get published. Yeah, that 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 squeeze is hot. No, <laughs> dude, no, don't give everything away. Hold something back. <laughs> Shot in the squeeze. I, ladies and gentlemen, we have no idea what Jack's talking about. There's no such thing as squeeze. Okay, do not Google squeeze. Um, uh, just just focus. On, on this first seller for Uniswap um, and please share your ideas uh, and let us know what you think because we think the community will come up with even better ideas for sellers as we asking, launch. Asking, asking crypto people to only focus on one thing is a losing proposition. <laughs> it is a losing proposition. <laughs> this is indeed true. Um, and, uh, I, and I think what we want everybody to do as well is focus on the airdrop. Um, the airdrop will be coming um, as we bring the, the network online. So if you are currently a SOM community member, um, please make sure to test our airdrop site at uh, airdrop.simulate.finance. Um, uh, we have a lot of folks asking, are these real tokens? No, we're still on the test nets, but we're super excited to, to get folks to keep testing. Let us know what they see as we continue to roll out towards a chain restart. All right, um, five minutes before we wrap, I think we've covered all the main components of what it takes to launch a Similia seller. One thing I wanted to talk about, Jack, before we go forward is maybe the fee structures. Um, when somebody proposes a seller, um, whom can they offer fees to? Do they just offer fees to the liquidity providers or can they offer fees to the validators? Like, is, is there an opportunity then for them to incentivize those folks with their development of their seller contract? Yeah, so, uh, you know, on Ethereum, you're able to sort of take arbitrary fees for these given contracts and pay them out to whatever kind of contract addresses you want. Um, obviously, the sommelier validators are going to be much more amenable to uh, adopting, not only validators, but also token holders, are going to be much more amenable to adopting a seller if they're getting paid fees. So that, that will be an important part. Uh, but this sort of flexibility in a smart contracting uh, program also enables us to do, to pay out the strategy authors and, you know, have a sort of more complex fee system. I think that, uh, you know, as we move forward, there's a number of sort of traditional fee systems we can adopt from, uh, we can look at that have been done in the past in different Ethereum smart contracts, as well as in traditional finance. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I expect to see this as a major area of sort of experimentation and, uh, you know, evolution going forward yep. Uh, yep. with these yep. sellers. What, what about bribing validators? Would it be insane for seller proposers to bribe validators for their votes uh, for a particular seller strategy? Would that be well, kind of crazy? You know, I mean, that's uh, th this is like getting into the curve land. And uh, <laughs> Cur Curveland literally runs on bribery. Um, that is a potential future for some. I think that in order to do that effectively, we would need to write some bribery protocol into the SOM chain. I'm not oh, man. I like it. But maybe some other open source. As community evolves and it's sort of what we see uh, deployed, you know, my uh, my experience in blockchain has been cooperation, sort of like voluntary cooperation towards how the sum outcomes tends to uh, provide the best experience as well as uh, you know financial outcomes, uh, and bribery tends to be kind of not a part of that. So 
anyway, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see how SOM evolves and, and whether or not we uh, see sort of factions form, which is what we've seen in Curve. Um, right, we'll right. After these various liquidity mining things. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. No. And, and great thoughts. Uh, you know, uh, you know, we can't predict the future, but definitely an interesting future for Sommelier that uh, we are just about to launch. Um, all right. So we're just up to two minutes. Uh, I just want to check in with the community of folks listening. Any questions from the community um, that's related to the uh, chain upgrade, related to creating sellers, um, related to the chain restart? Um, you know, raise a hand if you wish. Um, no price talk. We're not trying to talk about price and we don't want to talk about airdrops, but if you have a question, um, we'd glad to get that up as before we wrap down. All right. Just taking a few seconds here to check in. You, Tariq, you said the word. You can't say the word even. What, what, what is that? What is the word? <laughs> airdrop. <laughs> yes. There is no such thing as an airdrop. People need to stop looking for airdrops. This is ridiculous. This, the world does not run on airdrops. But uh, you may check airdrop.similia.finance uh, and, and give it a test there. Uh, check our blog. Um, thank you very much, Jack and Mantis, for jumping in. Safe travels to Zucky as he comes from a successful CFC San Moritz. Uh, and of course, uh, thank you to the protocol team for uh, jumping on and debugging uh, chain state with us. Thank you for the validators, um, imperators here. We'll, yeah, there you go. Thank you, guys. Uh, we will see you on the next.